Okay, alright guys, it's Wallace, and I just wanted to give a little talk about, you know, Team GB and their little progress, how they're getting on in the Olympics so far, seeing as though, you know, I am British after all, and I don't want to review every single game, just a few every now and then, just to let you know what's going on. But yeah, I watched the whole game, the whole 90 minutes, and I thought it was really good actually. Team GB played, like, really, really well. Um, I have, I've only come to know most of the players recently. Like, you know, the under 23 players, I didn't really know them much beforehand, but after watching a couple games, I'm starting to learn who they are and what teams they play for and, you know, how they play as well. And first of all, I'll just go through the squads. You've got Butland in goal. <laughs> Butland. You've got Mika Richards of Man City. You've got Taylor. Not sure who he plays for. You've got Coker, who plays for Tottenham. Yeah, Spuds. Now nah, you guys are alright. You've got Tonkins. He plays for West Ham, I think. We've got Ramsey, Arsenal, Giggs, United, Cleverly United, Allen. I'm not sure who he plays for. I think it might be Tottenham. I'm not too sure. And then you have Bellamy and Sordell in the starting lineup. And first half, uh, I wasn't really into it that much. It wasn't grabbing me much, but like, Team GB were uh, all over United Arab Emirates, UAE. UAE, they have a really solid squad. I mean, again, I'm not going to know most of the players, whether they're overweight or underage. So it was inter interesting just to see who two and how they play. I'm, I didn't remember, I don't really remember any of the names apart from a couple that stuck out to me. Um, we dominated possession for the whole game. The whole game is that we ended the game with, I think, 59% of possession, and that is just so much. Considering England on their own can't do that. Wales on their own can't, probably can't do that, but together against this squad, uh, we managed to, managed to do it. 60% possession. Bang, get in there. But, obviously, in the first half, we were leading 1-0 with Giggs, you know, the man of all seasons, Premier League's most coveted star, they say, and also sex scandal Giggs. But yeah, we don't need to talk about that because it's just football here. It's alright, it's football. So, Giggs opened the score with a header. Good ball from Bellamy. Bellamy, oh my gosh. He's so fast. He always delivers. He's always got the final ball. He passes to Bellamy. He will take on the man. He will either shoot, cross, do something. He'll do something with it and it will always have an end result, in my opinion. And same with what the commentator is saying as well. Um, Bellamy had, no, not, not Bellamy, it was Giggs. Giggs had the best link up play with everyone in the squad. He had link up play with Ramsey. A link up play with Bellamy, uh, Sordell, and also he linked up with Cleverly a lot as well. So Giggs, in my opinion, he was the cog that ran the team and had kept it ticking over. Although, in the second half, it was when Giggs was substituted. No, wait, before Giggs was substituted, uh, Egypt scored, and it was a really good pass, a run, and a finish. And United Arabs really deserved it because that was during a time where they had a lot of uh, play. And then after they scored the goal, they built their confidence rose so much. And at one point, they had a chance to go 2 1 up, and it was only because of a, a bad shot slash good save from Butland that kept him out. So, Giggs leaves the pitch, and uh, Scott Sinclair comes on, the winger. He's pace, bad the pace, plays for Swansea, and within 55 seconds or 59 seconds of him being on the pitch, he scores with his first touch. What more can you say? It was Bellamy again on the right, doing some skills. Step over, step over, step over. Beats the man, crosses it in. Goku actually saves it, but he palms it straight to Bellamy. No, straight to... Uh, oh, what's his name? Palms it straight to... Fuck, what's his name? Sinclair, that's the one, that's the one. Palms it straight to Scott Sinclair. Sort of a FIFA moment there where someone would get really pissed off, but it shows it happens in real life. He passes it straight to Sinclair and he just taps it in with his left foot. He does one, two, three. Five minutes later, uh, cleverly gets the ball off of a UAE player in the mid centre mid position and plays the ball straight through to the attack and what is his name? Sturridge. Daniel Sturridge, who was substituted on for Sordell. Even though Sordell played well, he still got substituted because they might be saving him for another game. It was Daniel Sturridge who just took the ball, uh, he was pacing two, diff two, diff two, UA two UAE defenders and just lobbed the ball over the goalkeeper easily. It was, 
It was actually quite good actually. It reminded me a bit of was it was it uh was it the man out there who played for England? I'm so bad at names and remember them at the time when I need them. It was Welbeck, that was it, Welbeck. He logged the keeper, just bang. And I think Sarazon was actually better. He chipped, he just chipped it over one time. 3-1. Forget about it. Um, Sturridge, he, he's got that good left foot, any. So that's how he was able to score that goal, I reckon. Sorda wouldn't have scored that, in my honest opinion. But, so we, I think we do need Sturridge, even though Sorda did play well in the first half. Um, now, United at Emirates, I don't know any of their players' names by heart, and they're not, and none of their players' names really stuck out to me. But, in the overall performance, I can say that the, com the keeper was really confident. He, when he had a save to make, he did make it really well, apart from the third goal, which was probably mainly his fault. Everything else he did well, saved many shots, and he was kept active for the whole game. Uh, and the whole team, the whole UAE team, were encouraged by each other, they were always running forward, strong run forward all the time, that's how they were able to score their goal, and they probably could have scored more if they did it more often. Uh, they did the basics really well, it was right near the end, it must have been about the 65th minute, and all of the UAE players who were in attack were just passing it perfectly, bang, 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 basically making England, no, sorry not England, Team GB look like fools, people who don't have movement and, and who don't know how to attack. UAE were attacking amazingly well, and they were unlucky not to score, like I said, because uh, I think it was, I don't want to mess up their names, I'm not going to try it, but it was one of the players who just shot straight at the keeper, and that's probably why they didn't take the lead. Uh, and again, throughout the whole game there was lots of movement, and you could tell that they were, they were into the game, they weren't just uh, passengers standing by waiting to lose. However, obviously they're not as experienced as, as Team GB were, and so they struggled to keep possession because they only ended the game with 40% possession, 40 possession, and the defender wasn't great because they just couldn't deal with players like Bellamy, Bellamy and Ramsey, and Giggs. And if I was to sum it up, the difference between Team GB and the United and Arab Emirates is simply experience. And if I want to count them up, all the players who have first team Premier League experience in Team GB, you've got Mika Richards, you've got Aaron Ramsey, you've got Ryan Giggs, you've got Cleverly, you've got Bellamy, you've got Sinclair, and you've got Sturridge. Seven players. Seven first team players uh, who are used to playing in the Premier League at the top, top level. And no one in the UA team is used to that. So. Regardless of what team you play for, even if you're the best team in that, uh, best player in that team in your league, for example, you're not going to stand up against Premier League players, and for me, that's the difference. Um, Giggs, uh, Richards, and Bellamy are the three overage players, and although I think we, we really do need them, it's mainly, in my opinion, it was the other ones who really drove the game. It was I mean, the gig is obviously said was quite central, but Ramsey, Cleverly, and uh, what is his name? Corker. <coughs> Corker in defence is so solid. Corker in defence is solid. Richards, he, which going forward, Richards is really, really good. But I have a few doubts about him defensively. Even though he's a total beast, uh, he's huge. He's got the sprint speed, but when he goes forward, he's almost unstoppable. When he's defending, I'm a bit. Doubt him a little bit because he might foul the player or run into him, just destroy him, give away a penalty. But other than that, you know, Richards is an excellent vice captain to, to, to Ryan Giggs as he is an overrated player. Um, I think Team GB can do well. I want you guys to let me know what you think about this, what you think about the Olympics as a whole. It's not just about football, it's about sport and countries coming together. So I want to know who you support, what country you're from. USA, UK, African team, African, uh, Asian team, I don't mind. But let me know who you think is going to win the football. Uh, obviously the favourites are like Brazil, Team GB, uh, Japan, Spain, Uruguay. Who's going to win the football and then also who you think is going to finish with the most medals. It's probably going to be China or USA. But all the other teams are different, good go. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been a little video. I hope you enjoy it.
click like if you like it, favorite if you favorite it. Anyway, it's been me, Wildest, and have fun.